was a product of New Orleans, but his name was known far beyond. Norman Tragel, homegrown opera legend and internationally renowned performer. And I think he was the greatest singer that this city has ever produced. We've had opera now for more than 200 years, but I don't think anyone else born, nurtured, trained, and educated here has had the, as much talent as Norman Tregel did. Born in 1927, Tregel York with the City Opera in the 1950s. City Opera, Tregel sang a dizzying array of roles, including several world premieres. It was a buoyant and expressive acting style that won over audiences. When music critic uh, told me that Tregel could be standing absolutely still on one side of the stage and on the other side of the stage some other singer could be uh, running around and no one would even look at the other singer. That was the level of his magnetism. This rare film footage demonstrates Tregel's masterful technique. The televised performance came soon after his European debut in Carlisle Floyd's opera Susanna as the Reverend Olin Blitch. It's just genius. Every word is colored. Everything is just strung out with tension. I mean, as a performer now, I can listen to it and admire that and say, wow. Perhaps Norman's physical makeup helped establish such a persona. Nature helped him out in a way. Norman had the deepest circles under his eyes of anyone I've ever known. He was always this big. And um, when he made up, disillusioned with New York's City Opera. He continued his successful recording career, but performed less frequently in his hometown. His career came to an end in 19... ending one of the most successful performing careers of the century. It's like a comet that streamed across the operatic sky, and the likes of him had not been seen before, has not been seen since, and I dare, dare say will not be seen again. It is not the average opera singer that makes those sorts of impressions on people. And That's amazing, gentlemen. Yeah, and, um, and amazingly appropriate because this next week kicks off the opera season. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to mention this from hearing Norman Trago's glorious voice. They can still hear it because at the uh, New Orleans Opera uh, office, which is 305 Barone Street, they have they are selling the, uh, the CDs. Uh, it's called the Classical uh, Series. And there are uh, many, many so, uh, Dorothy Kirsten and Norman and whatnot who have appeared in opera operas here. You can buy these CDs. So if you're interested, uh, check them out. It's 524-1018 is the number. Yes, the opera that, uh, is, we'll, we'll be celebrating our 55th season this year, and it, it starts, uh, let's say, next week, next Wednesday, and next, and next uh, Saturday. You can see the opening of the opera at the uh, Mahalia Jackson um, Theater of Performing Arts. That's in uh, Armstrong Park. And the first opera is Verdi is El Travador, which is an unusual tale of vengeance gone wrong, and it centers around two brothers who are unknown to each other's brothers, a gypsy woman and a, a, a very devout woman who gives herself to one man that she doesn't love in order to uh, save her own lover. Eduardo that's Villa, that's opera, that's grand opera. <laughs> uh, Eduardo Villa is one of the stars, and Ruth Falcom, a, a New Orleans uh, favorite, will also star. And I want you to pay attention to the times. The, it, Wednesdays, it's at 7 30 p.m. and Saturday at 8 p.m. These are new times, so check your uh, tickets, folks. Then the next opera is uh, Mozart's brilliant opera, The Magic Flute, and that's Wednesday, November the 12th at 7.30, and at the uh, Saturday, the following Saturday at 8 p.m., and it features two sets of lovers amid uh, fantasy. Uh, popular Jerome Hines is one of the stars uh, of it, and the executive director of the opera, uh, Ray Delia, says that The Magic Flute is great 
great entertainment both for uh, children and um, the whole family. Then Lachme has not been produced locally in 16 years, and it'll be playing December the 10th and the 13th again at the Theater of Performing Arts. And this is exotic India is its locale, and everybody goes to see Lock Bay, if you know it, for the wonderful song, the Bell Song. Mm -hmm. And that we will, again, I'm sure be thrilled by it. Director David Morlock has promised a really lavish setting because India gives that uh, of the new season. is not till March 18th and 21st, that's 19. 98, and that will be everybody's favorite, La Trave Atta. Mm. Uh, mm. I think Verdi's most popular opera, maybe. And that, of course, tells the story of the doom courtesan Margarita Gautreau, who finds love just too late in her life. Uh, La Trave Atta's curtains are now Wednesday at 7.30 and Saturday at 8 p.m. Why I've been stressing the times is because of hockey coming to the Municipal Auditorium. The Doesn't Orleans mean that breath. the same people are going to go see hockey, are going to go see opera, mm. but they're going to use the facility facilities there, the uh, parking mm -hmm. facilities, and they're trying to stagger the time so that it'll be convenient for so everybody. So it's a little earlier. Um, the Wednesday performance Yeah, Wednesday, is a little well, earlier. see, the operas have always been at 7.30. Mm -hmm. They haven't ever been at 8. Mm -hmm. But now, summer at 7.30 and summer so at 8. So really, you should and call you should the opera. <laughs> and there's still this. good tickets there. Okay. So call, and you can get the tickets, and also call and ask about the CDs, which are available. Okay. And, and you can hear Norman Tragel sing. All right. You thank know. you very much, Al. And those wonderful old Saturday and David Cuthbert's latest hit, Daryl's Tricks of the Moon meets the Amazon Queen of the Lost Lagoon. Let's hear it. Yay! <laughs> if that name confuses you, here are some of the stars of the show with an explanation.